Good morning. Um, we're happy that you can join us. Um, one of the things that the Chamber has been doing over the last couple of years is promoting export. Uh, and we believe it's very important for Curacao to grow economically that our exports grow. Uh, Next to that, we started a business point where companies can sign up and uh, get informed about these type of webinars and also information about the markets. Um, to, to show the interest that we have in exporting in the, this region, uh, the chamber is, is uh, become and two countries already um, board members in the Holland House. Uh, which is Colombia and Panama. And uh, we, are, uh, we are the uh, organization that uh, started with, the or with both Holland Houses. And now uh, together with Holland House Costa Rica, uh, we wanna also work very closely to see how we can help local businesses do business between uh, the two countries. Um, we have very interesting panelists today uh, that will inform you how we can work with Costa Rica and what are the things that can be done Please make use of the question and answer part and uh, let us know of what we can help you with as chamber. We have a, a great staff in our uh, information center uh, led by Stephen Damiana. Uh, any information you need or and if you're interested in a market that you want to go into, uh, please contact us. Um, the service uh, that we give you here is free of charge. So, uh, but of course, if, if uh, something has to be done in, in those countries, that there's a small charge, I guess, for it. But make use of our services. We're here to help you. Uh, you are our member, and uh, we want to make sure that the economy grows uh, as much as possible so you can be successful. Um, but again, what is very important here is that we grow our exports, whether it's in service or in products. And we believe there's a good opportunity for that. I want to wish you all a successful webinar and uh, good luck. Thank you, Mr. Billy Yonkir. And right now we are going for Mr. Hans Burst of Embajada del Reino de los Países Bajos para Centro America. Oh, sorry, I see I already have my presentation up there. So, um, Yes, good morning. My name is Hans Burs. I'm the trade officer at the Dutch Embassy. Um, welcome. Um, we are representing uh, as well your country. We are representing the four countries of the kingdom and we are a regional embassy for whole Central America. So we have five countries, Costa Rica, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Guatemala and Honduras. So eventually if you have questions or interest in some of those other areas, you're welcome to, to um, contact us. Some of the themes that we focus on as the embassy are human rights, security, social progress, and in this area we're talking today is on trade and investments. Next slide, please. Costa Rica, it's a relatively small country, 51,000 square meters, kilometers, uh, population of 5 million people. Uh, we have an economy of about $60 billion. Economic growth has been positive until now because of COVID. Um, it's a stable, relatively stable economy that has been growing about 3 4% for the last decade. Democratic government and a peaceful society since we don't have an army as well. Next. Some of the milestones. It's one of the oldest de democracies in the world. It's one of the oldest in Latin America. Ease of doing business, Costa Rica is getting better and better by reducing red tape and bureaucracy. Uh, importantly to know, it has the best educational system in Latin America. It's number one in literacy and also very important, number one in innovation in Latin America. That's also the reason because of the education uh, that we have in this country, human resources. A lot of high tech companies have been relocated here in Costa Rica as a near shore, mainly from the United States. And, um, and uh, some of the big clusters that are doing well is the medical equipment center, uh, fabrication, uh, shared services, back office. Um, and another important thing is Costa Rica uh, is generating 100% of the electricity from green sources, uh, something we can share experiences with the island regarding, uh, in this case, hydro, wind, geothermal, and biomass. 
about what is upcoming here and that might be you might have more experience in in curacao is on solar and uh together i believe you have a center in in curacao from tno working on hydrogen Costa Rica has a, uh, a company also called Ad Astra working as on hydrogen as well. So there, there could be some opportunities. Uh, it, Costa Rica holds 5% of the Earth's biodiversity with a lot of uh, microclimates. And that's why Costa Rica is one of the larger agro exporter in Latin America of tropical fruits, mainly bananas and pineapples, but as well coffee, sugar, palm oil, among other products. Next. Culture, uh, uh, people are very uh, welcomely, friendly, uh, important to have personal relationships. Main language obviously is Spanish, but a lot of people do speak English. Uh, negotiations, like a lot of countries in Latin America, it's building a relationship, it's a little bit longer term. Uh, there's also some bureaucracy, so you have to know how to nav navigate that. And, uh, and important is also when you do business to make good, agreements regarding payments. So most of the people here are accustomed to make arrangements of payments in advance. Uh, it's very relatively conservative, but uh, informal. People are relatively punctually uh, for meetings. Sometimes there could be some delays, but that's part of the, uh, of, of the culture here in Costa Rica. Next, please. Just to show you that, yes, the Netherlands, uh, the, man, the country of our kingdom is doing very good business with uh, Costa Rica. Because uh, for the last uh, five, four years, five years, our exports from the Netherlands has grown 176% to $230 million. Mainly our petroleum products, bulbs, most of them are flower bulbs, medical products, chemicals and machinery, and also services were exported from the Netherlands for around $60 million. Next. Costa Rica is an important uh, exporter, as I said before, of, of tropical fruits. Netherlands is the second uh, trading partner of Costa Rica. About $880 million of tropical fruit is being exported uh, of, uh, to, to, to Europe. So tropical fruits, fruit uh, juice, um, but also very growing very fast, as you can see, about uh, 300, now, $230 million are um, medical products. We have a very large uh, free trade zones where they have medical uh, assembly. Under, and we also have here uh, important investments of Philips Medical. Then we have food products and ornamental plants. Next. We have quite some Dutch companies active here. Uh, we hope to get some more companies from Curaçao as well. For the last uh, five years, the Netherlands has been the second foreign investor in, in Costa Rica. They invested close to $2 billion. And the largest investments has been uh, the new container terminal of APM terminals. That's close to $1 billion. And also the expansion of Philips Medical in Costa Rica has been very notorious. Next. Costa Rica, why do Dutch companies come here? It's a relatively local small market, but it's an interesting market, but especially Costa Rica is interesting as a trampoline, a, a springboard to the larger markets because of the free trade agreements Costa Rica has, especially with the United States and Central America, but also countries like China and Caribbean countries. Next. Where do we see opportunities for Curacao mainly? Um, because of Curacao, a lot of food is being imported uh, because of the tourist industry you have. We believe Costa Rica can potentially provide uh, a lot of products from beer, rum, other type of beverages, tropical fruit beverages, from frozen and fresh meat products, um, dairy products, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables, bakery products, snacks, and pet food. So this is on the commercial side. I believe Costa Rica could be an interesting country to get some sourcing. And um, right now, APM Terminals is also working on a uh, logistics center where you can consolidate. So you can maybe, as the way is being done in Miami, get different products and get consolidated here and then ship to, to Curacao. Next. 
Another area where you see uh, potential opportunities for, for Curacao because of your financial center, your internet center, and very importantly, your data center, which is qualified of tier quad, uh, four. Costa Rica is the number one exporter of high value services in Latin America. So we have a lot of business centers here. It's um, proficient um, and it's getting more and more uh, high value added processes. So we have accountability, we have shared services, we have research and development. So what they still looking more and more, and companies are growing very quickly here. Companies like Concentrex, they just opened, I believe, the fourth for the uh, division here and they're looking for young people that speak languages and i believe curacao has quite some population that speak two three four languages so that could be interesting to explore um now to working from home which is the new the new way to to get involved in costa rica through those uh, contact centers and through those shared services to work with them and create employment in on, on the island of curacao next also, your experience in, in logistics and tourism. Costa Rica, um, as I said, is a large exporter of different commodities. So you could look into seeing how Curacao could establish itself as a distribution hub for the Caribbean for Costa Rican products. Maybe you can talk to Procomer and, Procomer and see about the feasibility of redistributing products from Costa Rica to the different islands around Curacao. Uh, from Curacao. And another thing is uh, maybe work together on promoting eventually when they come back online again, the uh, cruise tourism. I believe Costa Rica because of their um, biodiversity and you because of the beach and the Caribbean swear, I think you could work very well together of a, pro a dual, pro uh, dual promotion of cruise and cruise tourism. Next. Also, uh, Costa Rica is trying to do port development, especially uh, on the Pacific side in COP, the Pacific Port Authority has three or four small cruise terminals and they are looking to concession them out. So of course our port authorities looking to expand the expertise and the services, this could be an opportunity since you have a lot of experience how to develop tourism uh, related to cruise tourism and Costa Rica is looking for that experience. So I think that could be a, a natural um, expansion of course of port authorities to, to look into this. So they're looking at expanding birds, the develop, uh, bird terminals, they, uh, the piers, developing uh, how to develop the, the, the right type of shops and uh, restaurants, and also some financing. Next. Also on the Atlantic side, um, the ports of Limon and uh, is looking to convert itself in a, uh, to probably to a concession, a new uh, cruise terminal. The potential to have three, four uh, birds, it's, it's big. You see the terrain to the right hand corner that's all at, at the old uh, container terminal, that has been moved to the APM. So all that land, which normally is front, front uh, port land that's highly valuable, but it can be exploited in building restaurants, hotels, uh, boulevards. So a lot of potential on project development and also looking at exploring the cruise terminals in on the Atlantic side. Next. As I said, uh, uh, Limon is looking at that. Uh, cruise ports, marinas, hotels, restaurants. Um, so also for people from Curacao in consultancy, I think, believe uh, there will be opportunities as well for you there, there as well. Next. That's very quickly in those five minutes to tell you about what are some of the opportunities we think as embassy uh, could be interested for Curacao to, to explore. And here are my address and email. So anything, any questions, we are welcome and we are here to, to help you as well. Thank you very much. 
Thank you, Mr. Hansbers. And right now I will pass the word for Mr. Herman van der Plaats of Holland House, Costa Rica. Thank you so much, Kishanti Peter. It's a, it's a pleasure uh, talking to you. My name is Herman, Herman van der Plaats, just as I've been introduced. I'm the president of Holland House for three years. The Holland House in Costa Rica exists three years, so we founded it. But before Holland House was here, uh, we already had a Dutch club here since 1953. And I'd like to share that with you because one of the first, uh, or the first member, the first board member was actually uh, Joseph Hendrikus Philip de Jong from Curaçao. So there's already a long history between Curaçao and Costa Rica in that regard. Um, if we look now to Holland House, we, we noticed uh, three years ago that uh, uh, the Dutch community, which indeed had a lot of uh, Dutch companies uh, or Dutch related companies, um, there, there, there was a need for sharing information and, and, and having more like physical networking. And uh, so that's why we founded uh, Holland House which, which I really embraced the idea of, of getting done more business with Curaçao, not only because we put it in the constitution from our chamber to include all the Dutch Caribbean islands, uh, but also because there is a large, relatively large Curaçao uh, uh, population here in, Costa, in the Costa Rica. Maybe Hans Boers maybe can later mention a little bit about that, that, that as well. I think it has to do also with the, um, uh, the, the schooling from, from quite some hospitals uh, here. So, so in that regard, there's, there, there is already some contact uh, between the areas. We are living close to each other. Nonetheless, uh, I think we all acknowledge that more business can be developed uh, between uh, Curaçao and, uh, and Costa Rica. So I think there are opportunities, something that we have been looking into already for uh, quite a while. Now, I'm doing this presentation without PowerPoint because Hans Boers already had a very good PowerPoint. So I'm just telling you a few things and that you get to know me a little bit and get to know us a little bit. So if you want to reach out to us, I recommend you to go to our website, hollandhouse.cr. In hollandhouse.cr that you will see is that we have uh, a little less than 60 uh, members. Uh, we exist in three years. So I think within the, the, the small, that we can um, tap from, it's, it, it's quite okay to have uh, that kind of members. But what we noticed in the recent years, in the recent month actually, that there's a lot of Costa Rican companies that wants to do business with other parts from the European Union to Curaçao are becoming member as well. So it's not just Dutch companies. Something that I like to share with all of you, uh, and that's also something personal, what I noticed and it's interesting to share is that uh, Costa Rica is actually quite a bilingual uh, uh, country. Um, my Spanish when I arrived, and it's still not perfect, uh, but when I arrived here 15 years ago and founded my own company, um, I noticed, I mean, my, my Spanish was not very good. And uh, the, the people from Costa Rica, especially in the business environment, they speak English, you know, like so, so without speaking uh, uh, Spanish, you're, you're going to be fine here. Um, something that I'd like to share with you too is that uh, the, the reason why we have founded now Holland House and, and why it's interesting to contact us is that because we have uh, an enormous variety in amount of members. So these are not just the maritime sector and the transport sector and the tourism and the industry because obviously that, that's, the, that's the larger part. But we also have like roofing, we have a telecom uh, company, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, agriculture flowers kind of companies, um, many of, uh, of small companies, like small and medium sized companies uh, with, with some, some Dutch, Dutch relation, they are here as well. And uh, I know there's a lot of interest uh, in welcoming uh, the businesses from, from Curaçao. So I'm very sure that uh, if, if, if companies wants to do business from Curaçao in Costa Rica and to do the export, then Holland House is there to, uh, to, to embrace that because that, that is one of the things that we have 
as I said, mentioned uh, an earlier in our constitution, there's, there's something important for us. And, and, we, and we like to work with the uh, Curacao Chamber, of course, in, in, in that, that regard as well. Um, I think I'm going to leave it like this. Uh, I hope I, I have introduced ourselves uh, then enough. If you have any more questions, uh, reach out to, to, the, to the chat group. And um, me and my colleagues will definitely, my colleagues from Holland House will definitely welcoming any questions and uh, reach out to you uh, whenever necessary. Okay, thank you, Mr. Her um, Herman. And right now I'll do just a small change in the schedule and I will pass the word to Ms. Cristina de Freitas Bras. Good morning, Eliani, will you share my screen or do you want me to share that? Let me just share my screen. Um, yes, please share yours. Thank you. Okay, let's do this. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my presentation is in Dutch. I was expecting uh, a few people speaking Dutch, but uh, I will switch uh, to English, although my presentation is still in, in Dutch. So uh, if you prefer for me to switch into Papiamento or to English, just uh, indicate that in the chat and I can make the switch uh, easily. So good morning, everybody. My name is Cristina de Freitas Bras. For the ones that don't know me, I'm a tax lawyer with uh, BDO. And Sorry, uh, Christina, before you continue, please check your presentation. You have to open it. You will see, we are seeing your notes. Um, Let me check that, one minute. Oh, okay, yes. Is that better, Liliani? Um, no, still not. You have to choose up in the bar in the the presentation form, where you see auto save, the floppy disk, etc. Yes, that one. Let's see if it goes. Yes. Still not, just a minute. Okay, uh, no, let's do this. Yes, please continue. Yes, well, you're sharing my screen. I am I'm sharing the presentation, please continue, thank you. Go to the next page, I need the next page. Yes. So th there you have my information. If there are any questions uh, after the presentation, you can just get in contact with me. I've been a tax lawyer for over 15 years uh, with experience in uh, trades. And I've also participated uh, together with the Chamber of Commerce in uh, a lot of trade missions uh, to Latin America. And I've had experience with a lot of Holland houses in the region. So it's, it's nice to, um, again, see you guys in the presentation. Uh, but today we'll talk about the focus on export. So Eliani, if you can just continue to the next sheet. Take into account that when you are considering export, a company has to take into account that there are a few taxes that will always be applicable to your company. So whenever you're thinking about doing business and you're going to do business from Curacao, you will always need to take into account that you will have profit taxation in Curacao. You'll have turnover tax or an indirect tax. Some people like to call it sales tax. You will maybe have also import duties if you are importing the product and getting them out of Curacao. And in this case, when you have employees, you will also need to consider, say, consider wage taxes and social premiums. In addition, if you are on the island and you also have real estate, you will also need to consider the real estate tax. So take into account that as a business, before you're con even considering doing the export, if you're just incorporating your business in Curacao, you will have those taxes that you need to consider. Yeah, next slide, please. Whenever we take, think about profit tax, uh, we think about the various uh, opportunities that were present and these opportunities were present in the past. I'm talking about, we need to make a distinction. There was also um, some legislation before the year 2019 that made it very attractive to export and that was the e legislation and the export facility, for example. 
However, we need to take into account that as of the year 2019, the legislation, the tax legislation changed for export and for doing business outside of Curacao. So in principle, in the year 2019, whatever you did outside of Curacao, providing services or you were selling products, then the profits related to that would not have been taxed. As of January 2020, so beginning of this year, there was again a change in legislation. And this uh, change in legislation indicates now that only local profits will be taxed. And with local profits, they are designated as being profits realized in Curacao and from uh, some or, or activities that are done from Curacao. So for example, in the year 2019, if I did go ahead and, and, and broker a deal or, or did a trade and provided services to Costa Rica, then in this case, in 2019, my profits would have been untaxed. However, as of the year 2020 and, and further, we can, we can say that if these services were initiated in Curacao and provided from Curacao, then in principle, the tax legislation will indicate that those profits are local profits and they will need to be taxed in Curacao. So the, the, the trick in doing business with, with Costa Rica is of course, designate those profits as being foreign profits. So profits that are realized outside of Curacao with a representative, for example, in, in Costa Rica, and this, that the, those profits can also be allocated to uh, Costa Rica. And in this case, then the, the only profits taxed in Curacao then will be the local profits. So the profits realized with the local activities. So also take uh, that into account. Um, so as in the past, export was per definition, it was exempt or it was uh, facilitated. Now it's, it's a bit different. Now, now we, we focus on what is local tax or local uh, profits, and that is going to be taxed in Curacao. Next slide, Eliani. What you also need to consider, of course, is that you may have turnover tax or sales tax upon the sale uh, of, serv of services or products. So in principle, you always need to consider a six or a 9% uh, taxation and nine will be applicable on the luxurious goods. And in this case, we will also need to take into account that at this moment, because the legislation was will most probably change as of next year, at this moment, if there are any products that are exported outside of Curacao, then you need to consider that there is an exemption applicable to the export of these products. Of course, you will need some documentation on file to claim that uh, exemption. You will need a copy of the invoice, the, the proof of payment, and also the transportation documents to be able to prove that these goods have been exported for the company to be able to claim, of course, the, the export exemption on uh, the turnover tax, the omzet belasting, as we say in Dutch. Take into account that in principle, if you are getting the goods in to, to, to do the export out, in most cases, uh, that's not the case, but just uh, consider maybe if you're importing goods and making a new product, if you're importing the goods, having them in Curacao, and then you are going to export outside of Curacao, upon import of the goods, you will pay 9% turnover tax. And if you have a deduction right, you need to request that with the tax authorities, then you can claim 50% of the taxes paid upon import uh, back in your tax return. So take that into account. If you are certain that you're going to export and you know beforehand that the goods are going to directly be exported to, to another jurisdiction, for example, Costa Rica, then you can also use uh, customs entrepot. So it's, it's a location, it's like a warehouse uh, from the customs department that you can use to store the goods. And then if you just directly store the goods into this entrepot, then you will not be paying any import uh, duties upon the import of the products uh, in Curacao. So just take uh, that into account. Can I have the next slide? So also take always into consideration when you import, you do have import duties and, uh, and customs. And in that case, it will also depend on the type of products because we're talking about sales tax when the products get in, but we also need to pay customs, uh, custom duties. And in this case, it will, it will depend on the article that you're importing, the product that you're importing. And uh, of course, as I mentioned before, if you're importing this product into an entrepot, you will not have 
imported the goods because they will be deemed to not have entered the levy area of Curacao. So take uh, that into account as well. Okay, can I have the next slide? Yeah, one, one thing to consider because we just flew uh, on the taxes that will be applicable because it's important that whenever you're doing business, one thing that's it's very important and people deem it most of the time very, very cumbersome or very difficult. Whenever we start talking about taxation, people get a bit scared, but it's good to have everything in place and to have this, the perfect structure set up from the beginning. So one thing, of, of course, also to consider, of course, is start by setting your structure correctly, taking into account your future um, uh, businesses. And, and one thing to consider that many people don't know about is that as being part of the Dutch kingdom, as an entrepreneur, you can also claim a, a, a voucher from the Dutch government. And in, in this case, when you can, you can claim this subsidy, you can make use of this voucher and you can get a, a tax lawyer or you can get, for example, an accountant or a business prognosis or if there are costs involved for, for Holland House, for example, you can also use this, this voucher if you request that. And by using this voucher, you can have 50% of your adv advice costs or the costs that have been incurred to, to research the business um, endeavor with Costa Rica, for example, you can have half of that paid up to 2,500 euros. So it's, it's very something to consider. It's not, re not tax related, but the great part is that whenever you're seeking a tax lawyer, whenever you're seeking somebody to prepare your business plan to go for the export, there are options that you can use as part of the Dutch kingdom. There are vouchers that you can claim. And one of them is the knowledge voucher then the information on this voucher can be found on the website of the Rijksdienst for Ondernemend Nederland. So you can uh, just uh, click on the links that I will be providing to you after the presentation. The Chamber will provide you with my presentation and you can get more information about how to claim these vouchers. And, and you can use them with my services, but you can also use them with Holland House and other services. So just take that into account. Well. By telling you this, I've, I've been very fast, uh, fast on this, but in principle, Eliane, you can go to the next slide. It's good to, to also consider whenever you are getting into business and whenever you're getting tax advice, you also need to consider that, uh, for example, how can we as BDO help you? We have a BDO offices in various jurisdictions. So whenever you're working with us here, we are also in, in Costa Rica. We can assist you, of course, with, with tax planning. We can assist you, of course, to look at the impact of importing and exporting goods uh, out of and to and from Curacao. We can assist you with the tax returns. So whenever you have any questions in connection with any tax matters, you can always uh, contact us uh, as well. And, and I think I'm at the end of my presentation already. I didn't have a lot of time. But if you have any questions, just let me know. Uh, uh, the, the one thing that I want you to consider and take away with you is, of course, that whenever we are doing any businesses outside of Curacao, we need to have the proper structure in place to just utilize the tax benefits uh, up to, to, to optimize these for your business to thrive and, and use all the benefits that are possible. So if there are any questions, you can just uh, send uh, the questions uh, through, through the chamber and I will be answering that. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions, I'll be pending uh, for those. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cristina de Freitas Bras of PDO Curacao. And right now I will pass the word to ProCommer presented by Mr. Rolando Dobles Madrigal. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Herman, Hans, uh, Kishianti, Maria Eugenia, everywhere, every single one involved in this particular webinar. We are looking forward to strengthen our relationship with Aruba, Curacao, San Martin, and all the Dutch islands in the Caribbean. I'm Rolando Dobles. As you mentioned, I work for Procover, uh, which is the trade promotion offices uh, from Costa Rica. And, and Based usually in Dominican Republic, today I'm in Puerto Rico, 
that's how it goes. I had to travel a lot, but I'm more than a fan of you guys in Aruba Corazao. I have the, 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 the good benefit of visiting you twice a year so on. So it's really, really good to have this conversation. So uh, having uh, that previous presentation have been uh, involved in about what is Costa Rica and a little bit about the trade statistics, I will move forward in terms of save some time for the other uh, participants. And I will flow at the end of the session about the Costa Rican export portfolio, which is longer than expected, but the idea is that you can review it. I, I share this presentation with the organizer so they can, uh, they can forward you by mail. And if you have any clue, anything that, any tip that you want to invest in or to buy from Costa Rica, please let me know. My contact information is on the end of our presentation too. So, well, in a nutshell, I will share the country brand presentation. You can do it in the YouTube. And again, it's in the presentation itself. So I will move forward to do. Uh, in Costa Rican numbers, it's really close to uh, actually uh, have been shared. Uh, only I will add is that we have 15 trade agreement with the rest of the world. So has Costa Rica uh, per se is really small in population and has in market we are more like wide open to the, to the trade promotion and trade investment. So we have 15 agreements, of course, we have with the European Union and some other key countries for us as the United States and Japan, Korea, and so on. We are more than 21 billion in exports, both in, in, in goods and services. And we export yearly to more than 157 destinations around the world. So even we are focused on in US, United States market and European market, we try to get a good balance and the Caribbean region is one of them. Of course, uh, really briefly, we have four uh, key players in the international commerce in Costa Rica. Two are from the government side, which is the Ministry of Foreign Trade and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Both uh, are, in, are the, poli uh, the public policy makers. Of course, one of them is more in charge of the uh, free trade agreement and trade facilitation. And the other one is more about the diplomatic relation with which oh, usually we need to take off advantage in the trade side of the business and two non-governmental offices. One of them is CINDI, which is the Costa Rica Investment Promotion Agency. Of course, it's focused on those for a, for direct investment around the world who had landed in Costa Rica and expand like Felix was mentioned. And also Procomer, which I work for, and we are more focused on the trade facilitation, but especially in the export side of the equation. We are, of course, in charge of the country brand in Central Costa Rica, too. Around the world, we have 40 offices. Uh, again, in the Caribbean region, we have two. One of them is in Dominican Republic. The other one is in Trinidad and Tobago. And from there, we try to cover the, the rest of the 20, uh, 38 uh, territories. And we have the, uh, are all across the Americas, uh, Central Europe, of course, uh, Asia, uh, uh, in the, in the, even in Israel, Dubai, Qatar, etc. So we have different schemas for direct uh, offices, as I mentioned, with uh, an alliances with the foreign affairs, uh, chambers, outsourcing, so on. The idea is to have an, an office for our exporter in terms to understand how is the market, how it's moving, what are the principal or the direct driver that they have there and try to make this approach with the demand and the offer in terms of trade. In the statistics, uh, I want to explain that from the mid 80s, we have the, the four traditional products that was mentioned before, coffee, bananas, beef, and sugar. That's what the most important uh, in terms of the export, as you mentioned, is that um, two thirds of the exports come from these four products. But uh, we try to diversify and move from those commodities to more value added products. And 
at the end of the of the decade of the millennium we are ready to trade and move forward to now those traditional products even they increase in amount they do they, there is not that we don't produce banana coffee actually banana is number three uh, pineapple which i added is number one in our export agricultural products but even the those number increase uh, the proportion is different now we have 10 or more than a tenth uh, uh, those particular products and more than 90 percent are now in more value-added products like you mentioned in medical devices aerospace uh, goods for industrial and so on actually this is a, a very uh, a picture of our sport diversification for for pre-covid for pre 20, 2019 we have uh, a fifth or 20 percent come from tourism this tourism is more like ecotourism is more that people who actually get involved with nature and take advantage of volcanoes or something like that uh, a 15 was mentioned is are coming from business related services like for example procurement and accountability most of them back office share services for multinational companies uh, taking advantage of the multilingual population uh, but of course with the most uh, uh, different schemes for communication itself. Uh, agricultural sector is, is still strong, as you will see, is the third in, the, in this equation. Mostly re with the medical devices that we are now in for. And from there, we have a different approach from food services, uh, especially for food industry, like beverage and, and pasta, tuna, and so on. Uh, IT services like web designing, uh, uh, web outsourcing in, in, in IT, etc. And the rest of the, of, of the equation that you can see is really, really abroad. In terms of the market um, for the Caribbean, uh, which is fourth in important after uh, United States and Europe, um, Central America, of course, we have the, the, the number four. And from there, this is the most important market for Costa Rica is the Dominican Republic. So uh, followed by actually uh, Puerto Rico, which is based on today. And of course, uh, Jamaica, Trinidad. But it comes really close, for example, Aruba, Curaçao coming, for, coming later. Um, and San Martin is really, really uh, a little bit longer than that. But the idea is that we try to make the balance with those companies. And as you can see, uh, sorry for the Spanish presentation that is the only that I can reach for this, this webinar, but for the, the most important in the data and for 2019, uh, we export more than a thousand different lights and different uh, SKU if you want. Um, from more than 300 companies. So it's not only a couple of, of guys who are exporting to the Caribbean, it's really strong relationship. They are taking advantage of the free trade agreement that we have in this case for Dominican Republic, with the Puerto Ricans included in the, in, the, in the NAFTA or the North American free trade agreement. Um, and the rest, for example, we have the CARICOM region and with the Europe, uh, uh, it, it does include with the, the French and the Dutch uh, side and so on. No? Then, uh, what kind of products we import and export? So I, I will move forward, uh, not to, to steal all the time, but yeah, they, we have from the concentrated, uh, from beverage, the, this case is for Coca-Cola, to medical devices, me, uh, medicines or drugs, etc., that we uh, produce not only food, not only the, the, the things that you can use in the food services, hotels, restaurants, etc., but also uh, in terms of the hardware side, for example, uh, electrical cables, um, diapers, uh, and so on. From the Caribbean region, we import most of them uh, raw material from bunker for the steel, uh, different kind of uh, even uh, plastic derivated, etc. The balance, the balance is still positive to Costa Rica, except for the 2014, which actually uh, Curaçao export more than Costa Rica. Uh, this is expressing million, uh, million dollar, but the rest of the of the years have been 
uh, a little bit positive for Costa Rica. Of course, we, the idea is to expand those numbers in both ways. We try to, to have a good balance between import and export, and that's the idea of this kind of webinar, to open the, 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 the mind in terms of the what can we do together uh, and take advantage of the platform in trade promotion of this. Uh, in terms of the COVID, that they asked me, what about the COVID in Costa Rica? How is we are dealing with? Uh, of course, has any other economy the impact have been really deep? And you can see in this case uh, the first semester of 2019, previous COVID that landed in Costa Rica, to the first semester that we actually in, in, in the last in, in March they arrived to Costa Rica the, the COVID. So as you can see that the, the GDP was in, uh, impacted by 4.3 percent and the consumption at home and home stockers is less uh, that more than one one percent of the GDP. And in terms of the export, import and export, even the investment have been impacted. But you can see it through the different line, different industry. You can expect, of course, that this 4.3% in the GDP comes mostly for the construction side. The construction, again, if we are dealing more with investment, dealing with uh, the hotels, etc. So uh, again, most of the project has just be frozen, expecting you or better time, or at least a little bit of centrally. And we have, of course, the commerce, the transportation, people stay at home, so people don't, don't use more the transport or they think twice if you have to move it again. And of course, hotels and restaurants and any, anywhere else was in, an impact in those times. In terms of the employment, uh, the employment arrived too. We have different lines. We are focused on the red one, which is the, the traditional concept of employment, and we move previous COVID from 12, around 10 to 12 previous COVID that's, uh, in, the, in the first month in January of 2020. But at the end of April is arrived to 20. So it, it doubled the, the percentage of people unemployed. So again, uh, people lost their job because of they were focused on tourism, they were focused on construction. Uh, restaurant, hotel, food service in general was impacted because people just don't get out of home or they stay uh, and, and food uh, was made at home. So the, that different lines. In terms of the investment in Costa Rica, again, uh, I mentioned that Cindy is probably your best partner here, has an uh, investment promotion agency. The idea is to have a single window in terms of what do you need to know about how to invest in Costa Rica, uh, it's a non-profit, non-political organization, and more than three decades now, uh, four almost. And of course, the idea is that we work together with the order for that I mentioned. It was ranked again as number one institution in foreign, foreign, foreign direct investment for the ITC in 2019. And the idea is that they can share all the information, all the all the knowledge that you will have to do in terms of how do you legally establish in Costa Rica, what about taxes that you that my previous speaker I have mentioned, in terms of immigration law, labor, payroll, banks, and so on. So the idea is you, you have this particular specialized guide in Costa Rica, uh, in the, they can follow all the tips, all the regarding if you need, pro, uh, for example, suppliers, if you you want to know the better location or site selection, etc. So the idea is you can have all the information and if you want me to introduce to Cindy, I will more than pleased to do that. In terms of the portfolio, as I mentioned, I will probably go faster here because the idea is to, to have this uh, food for thoughts uh, and the idea is to share about Q&A session. In terms of opportunities, Again, in the, for the agricultural side, uh, Costa Rica is still strong in this, for example, in pineapple and a scoring concentrated from pineapple is number one. We, we have several land uh, dedicated to the pineapple. Number three in bananas, even we are more than 50 years now producing bananas, we are still strong there. And food industry of food derivated, we come from uh, some of the, they are mentioned from, for example, drinks and liquors 
of course, all the juices and food concentrated, uh, jellies, pasta, as I mentioned, uh, cake, coffee, uh, sauces, uh, snacks, especially those kind of snacks, which is more directed for, uh, for example, gluten-free, sugar-free, fat-free, all the healthy and nutritional uh, thing here or uh, oriented food is more than that. Uh, dairy products itself, meats and the derivated uh, hair, hair of palm or palmetto, uh, pet food in general, as I mentioned, this kind of product with fat-free sugar is more that those kind of oriented, uh, gluten-free itself too, um, uh, from beverage, tuna, uh, tuna value added like this one with different sauces and elements that is more fancy than the regular that we can reach in any supermarket. And in terms of the specialized industry, again, it's a wide open and the idea just to share a little bit of what Costa Rica have to offer, but from fashion and clothing and from different health and wellness, a uh, hardware store, as I mentioned in the stats, metal working, electronics, which from PC boards to harnesses, motor rotors, et cetera, plastic, construction and machinery. Of course, all the related uh, in terms of services and goods for the restaurants, packaging, material construction, you name it. Uh, we have from the painting, coating, PVC, aluminum, glass, electrical, uh, machinery they developed for food industry, agriculture, industrial, wood, even is a block or block wood for construction or wooden furniture if you want a uh, home office in different lines uh, for storage, for uh, office, like stationary, paperboard, disposable, biodegradable, disposable products, learning, and so on. Packaging for the industry uh, in plastic, paper, cans, plastic bottles, caps, so on. So the idea is that, again, we have a, a really strong industry developed for the food and for the manufacturing for, for example, medical devices itself. So again, all the linkages derived for that kind of industry here at involved too, for example, of the packaging, labeling, and so on. From the agricultural, we have for different lines, for the, even the most important now are the biocontrollers, organics, which is more focused and um, oriented for the wellness. Uh, cleaning products, biodegradables, traditional, retail, institutional, for example, for uh, hospitals, for hotels, etc. If you want private label, you want different uh, label from the exporter, is it, something that you can deal with. And personal care, different lines, different products uh, oriented to hair, skin, main food, hand care. Uh, even for the spa, especially amenities that you can reach at the hotels, essential oils if you want to develop your own, uh, baby care, pet care, so on. Natural and nutraceuticals, again, not only pharmaceuticals, also superfoods and supplements, um, energizers, kit supplement, therapeutics, uh, cogs, etc. Again, the pharmaceutical from the human side, veterinary or animal side, you can have both. And advanced manufacturing from metal machining to plastic and advanced composite materials, electronics, if you want the, to develop that. Um, supplies from R&D to testing, sterilization, etc. Finally, I reached to the services with the, uh, I think we can complement really, really good with the, of, uh, the services offered in, in Curacao. Um, again, this kind of stuff you, you already was aware of in the previous presentation, but again, we have a really strong intellectual property protection. So if you want to use it as uh, outsourcing, for example, we can, we can establish a, a deal with that in, and just develop what you want for us. Um, in terms of the qualified workforce, we have from the technical high school, with people who actually are really uh, graduated really for work or you can have for example the national learning institute we have different uh, facilities around the, the country and of course they can train your people if you want to specialize 
uh, I don't know, from language development to different certification, for example, Cisco, ISO, and so on. And then the universities that we have 62, uh, fifth of them are for the government, the rest are private. And the idea is to have all the uh, credit and uh, accreditations that you can need in terms of your services. Services from digital technologies, from 3D animation, marketing strategies, uh, motion design to software development, even back to end programming, um, business intelligence, IR ERPs, uh, online advertising, software and design engineering. Uh, Internet of Things really, really oriented to the different facilities of the industry, for example, in the retail, even for home, agricultural, you can have different approaches, uh, artificial intelligence, engineering in general. And we mentioned this uh, previously, like for example, contact center, share survey, fact office, different lines, most oriented to that kind of third parties in your organization. That's a Costa Rica brief of what we do and what can we offer and as Procomer, I want to thank again to the chamber and all the people that have been available this uh, space for us and more than welcome to all the Q&A. Here is my contact information. This is my mobile and actually it's my WhatsApp. So just drop me a message and we'll be in touch shortly. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mr. Rolando, Dobles Matrigal. And I, wa I just want to inform you, so inform all the participants, that at the end of the presentation, you will get the slides of the organizations. All right, and remember to ask your questions in the Q&A sections. So at the end of the webinar, we will answer the questions. Okay, just remember. Next, I will pass the word for TMF Group Costa Rica, presented by Mr. Juan Carlos Rubio. Hi, uh, good morning, everyone. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, first of all, for the uh, opportunity uh, of, uh, of being here. It is a pleasure uh, to have the, uh, the opportunity to talk about uh, uh, Costa Rica and uh, specifically uh, about uh, tax compliance in Costa Rica. My name is Juan Carlos uh, Rubio. Um, I work for a TMF Group. We are a, a global company uh, that has a presence in, um, uh, in Central America, uh, the Dominican Republic, uh, Panama, and uh, Jamaica. We're specialized in uh, assisting uh, companies to start uh, operations in uh, other countries, and uh, um, especially when it comes to uh, aspect of compliance and um, uh, administrative services. Today, um, uh, we are going to give a, a quick uh, uh, overview of uh, tax compliance aspects that need to be taken into consideration when uh, starting and running operations in, um, uh, in Costa Rica. Uh, besides the, um, uh, the, the advantages that have been uh, described by the previous panelists. Um, I think it's important to measure that uh, Costa Rica has a very strong institutional uh, uh, reputation within, within the region. Um, uh, as part of that reputation, uh, significant uh, developments that are worth mentioning is that uh, there was a, a tax reform in 2018 that uh, was the first significant tax reform that the country had uh, for the past uh, a number of years. Uh, one of the main um, aspects was the change into a general sales tax law to a more value added tax system, uh, which uh, had an impact on, uh, uh, on, on the local products that um, and the operations uh, here in Costa Rica. To give you more information about uh, the local uh, taxation aspect is that the system is, uh, is based on the principle of uh, territoriality. So any uh, business activity in Costa Rica will be taxed in Costa Rica. That also means that uh, certain um, uh, corporations that are doing business here might be subject to a, a permanent establishment uh, uh, rules. Um, the corporate income tax rate for, um, for Costa Rica is 30%. Uh, 
there are uh, lower rates for um, uh, for companies that earn uh, income under a certain threshold. And as I mentioned before, as part of the tax reform uh, of 2018 that was implemented in 2019, uh, the general sales tax was replaced by a value added tax, uh, which covers uh, transactions from service um, and goods. Uh, uh, one of the uh, elements is that the use of um, uh, certain uh, online or te technological platforms are also subject to VAT uh, in, in Costa Rica. Um, other important changes that were introduced um, is the use of electronic invoice. That was something that was not uh, put in place um, uh, before, but with the tax reform, um, uh, it was implemented. And also to provide uh, transparency uh, to the operations, the uh, IUBO registration um, was also put in place for um, uh, for companies that um, that are incorporated and registered in uh, in Costa Rica. Uh, it is important to mention that there are certain incentives, uh, as the previous uh, panelists have mentioned. The workforce of Costa Rica is uh, is um, highly edu highly educated that has created uh, the advantages that, um, um, uh, that has been mentioned in the past. Uh, uh, together with that advantage, it comes uh, a tax incentive that uh, the government has uh, put in place for a number of years um, uh, that has created free trade zone where um, the, there is a corporate income tax exemption or reduction and also um, exceptions for import and duty uh, uh, taxes. So um, it, is, it is a very solid regime uh, with a very structured framework that is put in place um, uh, for companies that meet the requirements uh, uh, in, in Costa Rica. The requirements are listed in, uh, in the law, so it's a, it's, it's a transparent uh, process. In terms of the, the declarations, the corporate income tax return for corporations needs to be filed uh, uh, um, on, on a yearly basis and uh, paid, uh, taxes are paid uh, quarterly and, uh, and annually. Um, uh, it needs to be uh, filed within uh, two months, 15 days after the year end. There are no filing in, uh, extensions. And for um, uh, companies that are in the free trade zone, they also need, need, to, pre need to present uh, uh, an additional requirement to, um, uh, to, to the regulated entity. Uh, I think it's also worth to take into, into consideration uh, uh, the uh, uh, social security and employee entitlements that are um, in, um, uh, also in place in the country. We will share this presentation uh, with you. So um, in, um, uh, in the benefits of, of time, we'll, we'll, not, uh, we'll not go here um, uh, into details. Uh, but as, as, um, as a summary, um, uh, the tax regime is, um, uh, it, it is transparent. I think the, the, the last development uh, had uh, significant changes. Um, uh, companies are still getting used to it. And I think it's worth um, uh, mentioning that uh, more developments are expected uh, in the coming years uh, that I think we should um, uh, keep an eye on them. Um, uh, as I mentioned before, um, uh, my name is Juan Carlos Rubio. I am the managing director, and uh, here you can find uh, uh, my contact details. Thank you very much for your time.